All right, so I'm picking up around uh, on your homework, it would have been around number 14. So, around 14, you start getting questions about this all possible zeros of the um, function. I want to show you all how to find all possible zeros. <laughs> And this would be possible rational zeros of a function. Because up to now, they've been giving us some of the zeros and we would use synthetic division and work through it. So now they're not giving me any of the zeros and I got to find them on my own. So to find all the possible zeros of a function, First thing you do, you want to find all the factors of the last number and we also call that the constant term because that's the number at the end and it don't have no variables with it so we call that the constant term. So we're going to find all factors of the last number. Then we're going to find all factors of the first number. And that first number, we often call that the lead coefficient. But at this moment, I've got my last number, found all the factors. I've taken my first number, found all its factors. Now, to get all possible rational zeros, we take all factors of the last number and divide by all the factors of the first number. So take all factors of the last number and then divide by all factors of the first number. Now what I will do instead of writing all the positive numbers and all the negative numbers, I'm going to use the plus or minus. That way I don't have to write everything twice, okay? All right, so all these factors I find after I divide will give me all the possible rational zeros of this, okay? I'm going to do an example of that. When we find all the rational zeros, and then I'll show an example where that's going to be used, okay? So I'm going to list all possible zeros. Now, we'll say this ain't hard work, it's just tedious work because you got a lot of numbers on some of these factors. So y'all, they're giving me f of x equals 15x to the sixth plus 15x to the third minus 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. So as it goes, I would not know where to start when I was running synthetic division because I would probably start with numbers like 0, 1, 2, and go through numbers like that. But if we can find possible zeros, then that eliminates a lot of extra work we've got to do. So, first thing we'll do is find factors on the last number, which is 4. And let's see, factors of 4 would be a 1, 2 times 2, and then my 4. Then, I take all the factors of my 
first number, which is 15. So let's see, 15 has a one, three, five, and 15. So I've gotten all my factors. Now to find all the possible zeros, we'll start with the factor for um, the first factor of four, which is a one. Now remember, I'm gonna use my plus or minus one and i'm going to take that one and divide by all four factors of the 15. so i got a one divided by one i'll have a one divided by three i'll have a one divided by five and then i'll have a one divided by 15. now that takes care of my one being done now can any of these fractions be simplified? Because I want them simplified to the smallest form. And that'd be what my one over one. So this one, I could actually make a plus or minus one. So that's given me four numbers I could try with synthetic division. Now, the one's taken care of. I'm going to take that two and divide by all four of these numbers. So you have two divided by one. We'll have two divided by three. Two divided by five. And then finally, two divided by 15. So that takes care of two. And once again, I need to see if any of this fractions can be simplified. And it looks like the only one is my two over one again. So that will simplify to a plus or minus two. All right, then finally, we will take the four and divide by all three of these numbers. So four divided by one, then I'll have four divided by three, four divided by five, and then finally, four divided by 15. And if you notice, I still got to simplify the one with the one on the bottom. So that'll just turn into a plus or minus four. So what that means is if I was going to find all the zeros out of this polynomial, the rational zeros would have to be one of these. Okay. Now, this thing would technically have six zeros. So all six of them could be rational. I could end up with say four of them rational and the last two could be imaginary. Um, but this at least, every polynomial is going to have at least one or two of these rational zeros. So, okay. So, this next problem I'm going to give, they're not going to give us any of the zeros, and we're going to have to find them all, okay? So, this one's going to be bad, would it? Which, which one's the answer? Uh, the answer that you would pick would be the one that had all these. Oh, okay, so then multiple choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, all right, these okay. ain't the actual zeros of it, but they're the possible okay. zeros. Yes, sir. Okay. And usually these are like A, B, C, D type choices. Mm -hmm. So they don't make you put in like 20 of these fractions or nothing. They'll just, usually they're just A, B, C, D, and you just pick the one. Y'all, let's look at where this is taking us. So the last three problems deal with what I'm about to do. We're going to find the rational zeros and the other zeros of my polynomial is going to be f of x equals x to the third minus 73x plus 72. Now, after I get my zeros, then 
part B, they want me to factor it into linear factors. So this would be my part A on that, okay? So if you want to, you can start with synthetic division and start running zero to it, one, negative one, two, negative two, three, negative three. But we can narrow that down by using that property we just came up with. So I'm going to first find what are my possible zeros, and then I'll check them to see if they give me my real zeros. So the possible zeros. So I'm going to take the factors of my last number. So 72, we want all the factors of 72. And y'all, the first number is just a one. So that's going to be nice on this problem because I don't have a number in the front. I'm not going to end up with a whole lot of fractions. Okay. So factors of 72 would be one, two, three, uh, four. Ooh, let me get my calculator for all these numbers. That thing's going to have a lot. So I got a program I gave y'all, if you got it, that says factors two on it. And that factors two program will factor all factors of our numbers. So my number was 72. So my factors are one, two, three, four, six, eight, nine, 12, 18, 24, 36, and 72. Now, the first number only had factors of one. So my possible zeros are going to be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus four, plus or minus six, all the way down these numbers. So when you get a number like 72 that has a lot of factors, now I will say this. I am guaranteed for my rational zero to be one of these numbers. It could be two of them numbers. All three of them could be rational zeros. I don't know. But I am guaranteed at least one of them. So if I can figure out which one of those is a zero, then I can knock this out with synthetic division. Now, do we want to run every one of these numbers through synthetic division? Because y'all got a powerful calculator in front of you. So y'all, let me share my calculator screen and I'll show you what I would do to that. I would graph that because we know one thing. We know that the zeros are equal to where the graph is crossing the x-axis at, right? So that's the thing we looked at. So I'm gonna go to y equals and graph this. So let me clear that one out. So I got what, uh, x to the third? Uh, what I got, minus 73x. And then plus 72. So what I want to do is I'm going to graph this and see if any of my numbers look like where that graph is crossing over that x-axis. So I'm going to hit my graph. Oh, it looks like all three of these are going to hit it, don't it? So if you look on the on the left side, that looks like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That looks like a negative nine. On the right side, it looks like I'm crossing at one. And I'm crossing it eight. So the numbers that I would definitely be looking at would be the negative nine, the one, and the eight. Now remember one thing. This is an x to the third. If I can get one of my zeros out of it, I'll have three numbers that I can use the quad on to get those last two, okay? 
All right, so I'm gonna try that negative nine first because we have that on the graph. So let me switch my page back. So that's what I, I believe in using that calculator's power. Um, and look at this. That would have been a positive one, which actually would have probably been the first number I tried would have been a positive one. And then I would probably just went down in order. Um, but what if these were not one and maybe negative nine, eight, and another number? You would have had to go through a lot of numbers before you got to one that worked, okay? So you just graph and let it sort of guide you. All right, so y'all, I'm going to run that negative nine and see if I can get a zero remainder. Because if this is a zero, my remainder will be zero, okay? All right, now let's write our coefficients down. Oh, y'all remember one thing? I got my x3 term, I put my one. I don't have an x squared term. So since we don't have an x squared term, we're going to have to put a zero for that number. I got the x term, which is negative 73, and then my constant term is a 72. Man, it's just now one R synthetic division, praying for a zero remainder, okay? So we bring the one down. One times negative nine is negative nine. Zero plus negative nine is negative nine. Oh, let's see, negative 9 times negative 9 is a positive 81. Uh, 81, negative 73 is going to give me one a positive 8. And then here we go, 8 times negative 9 is negative 72, which gives me a zero remainder. So that means my first zero is negative 9. Now, we've got three numbers left right here. Since I'm down to three numbers, I'm going to use the quad formula. I'm going to pull my calculator up, y'all, and see when I get on the quad for that. But I'm telling you, I, I pretty much bet I know what we're going to get. I bet we're going to get that one in that eight that we got on the graph while ago. So one enter, negative nine enter, eight enter, and guess what? It told me x is one and x was eight. So all of these zeros are rational zeros. Okay, so all these are rational zeros. So it's going to ask you rational zeros, which would be all three of these. Now, if I would have got radical answers or imaginary answers, those would have been called other zeros, okay? And I'll, my next one will have some of them for you. So now this problem says for part B, so part B on that was right as linear factors. So they'll give you f of x equals. <clears throat> so what they mean by linear factors is they want it in factored form like when we were doing that foiling with them the other day. And I had three zeros, so I'm gonna have three parentheses. <laughs> so y'all, my first zero is x equals negative nine. If x equals negative nine is my zero, then my linear factor would be x plus nine. Right, because I would have x equals negative nine. To get a zero on that side, I would add nine to both sides. This zero is a positive eight. To write it as a linear factor, it would be x minus 8. So basically, if you notice, all I'm doing is changing the signs. I'm putting them in my linear factors. 
And then this one was a positive one. So my linear factor would be x minus one. Okay. And then that's it. So the trick on these, you're not going to know where to start. Let that. I mean, you can find all the possible zeros, but use a graph to help you a little bit. All right, so any questions on that one? So that's like the, I guess the mountaintop for this section, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, y'all, any questions online on that one? All right, so I'm gonna do my next one then. And this one will have four zeros. So I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to do the same thing, find a rational zero. And the other zeros. All right, this one has f of x equals x to the fourth minus seven x to the third minus 35 x squared minus 41 x minus 14. Okay, so I'm going to find my possible zeros again. So my possible zeros I'm going to look at factors of my last number, which is 14. Factors of 14 are 1, 2, 7, and 14. My first number is a 1 again. And the only factors of 1 is a 1. So that means that my possible zeros, since you got a one on the bottom, is going to be a plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus seven, or a plus or minus 14. And you, you really like it when you got a one on the bottom, because then basically all you're looking at is the factors of that last number for your zeros. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we were happy. We had a one in the front, so then that meant my zero came out of that. Plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus seven, plus or minus 14. So y'all, I'm gonna go back to the calculator real quick so I can get help on finding which of these numbers to start with. So let's go to our calculator. All right, so I need to clear my screen, go to Y equals and clear that. All right, so this one was a little bigger. I had an X to the fourth. Minus seven X to the third. Minus 35 X squared. Uh, what's that? Minus 41x. And then minus 14. All right, so I've got it in. Now I'm going to try to see if I can get a graph to get me one of these numbers here. So let's go to graph. And there it comes. And y'all, it looks like I got two possibles. I got this one over here. Looks like it's crossing that negative one right there. And it looks like it's definitely crossing on that negative two. Now, if you want to make for sure what it's doing at that negative one and negative two, go to the table. And let me arrow up and find negative numbers. So you see at negative one and negative two, 
I got zeros for those y values. That means those are zeros. So y'all, I'm going to start with negative one because that's an easy number. I'm going to run that through. I know the second one I'm going to probably use is that negative two, okay? All right, so I'm gonna start with negative one and, um, and then use negative two because notice I got an X to the four. So that means I got four zeros. Then if you notice, you can only see where it touched the A factor twice on that problem. That's telling me that I will have two rational zeros, but the other two zeros are probably not gonna be rational because you don't see where they're crossing the line, okay? So let's start with a, what was it, negative one? Let me write the numbers down. So I got a one, negative seven, negative 35, negative 41, negative 14. I didn't need to use those zeros on this one because I didn't have any missing exponents on that, okay? All right, so we're hoping for a zero remainder. So let's go, let's see what we get. So I'll bring the one down times negative one is negative one. Plus negative seven makes that a negative eight. Times negative one makes that a positive eight. Negative 35 and eight is a negative 27. Times a negative one is a positive 27. Oh, let's see, that's what a negative uh, 14. And then negative 14 times negative one is a positive 14, which gives me zero remainder. Now, we know the first zero is going to be negative one. Now, we still got four numbers under here. That's too many to use the quad with. So we're going to have to use these numbers on synthetic division again. So use these numbers with synthetic division. All right, so let me make some room up here. All right, so my new coefficients will be one is a negative eight. Uh, got a glare. What's that? Negative twenty-seven, and then a negative fourteen. The second C that I'm going to try was the other number we had, which was what a negative. Uh, was it a negative C one eight? I think one Um. Now I'll tell you the truth. If I was doing these by hand without my graph, I'd probably use a positive one first, which wouldn't have worked. A negative one would have worked, but then. I probably started with the two, then the negative two, and kept going until something was. All right, we're praying for a zero remainder, so here we go. Bring that one down. One times negative two is negative two. Negative eight plus negative two is negative ten. Negative ten times negative two is twenty. Let's see, negative 27 and 20 is negative 7. And there we go. Negative 7 times negative 2 gives us a positive 14 with a zero remainder. So the, so the rational zeros are going to be the negative 1 that we found and the negative 2. I don't know what these zeros are going to give me yet. So I'm going to now use my quad formula. Once you get that down to three numbers, we just want to hit it with the quad real quick. So let me see what we get on that. So I've got a one, negative 10, and a negative seven. All right, I don't want them decimals, so I hit enter one more time. 
looks like it's giving me five plus or minus four square root of two. That means since you got radical answers, this would be what they considered other zeros. So five plus four square root of two, and then five minus four square root of two. Now I will say math lab will probably use, let you use the plus or minus on that. Oh, and then it says once again, part B, I'm going to write these as linear factors. So that'll be my f of x. I had four zeros, so I'm going to have four factors. All right, y'all. So my first zero was a negative one. So in factor form, that'll be an x plus one. So all we're doing is changing them signs on them. That was a negative two. So this will be an x plus two. Now, this it don't matter. You're going to change the signs of the fives and the signs of both of these. But this is positive, it's going to turn to the negative, and negative is going to turn to the so all we got to make sure is that the fives are negative. So you got x minus five minus four square root of two and x minus five plus four square root of two. Okay, so just change the signs on these numbers, throw them in parentheses and then be done with that. So questions on uh, eight four. So I'm about to show you all a little bit of eight five uh, five one. Oh no, I think I wasted your money on you. It's not bad. It goes with that eight five stuff. So questions on eight four. I think 8-4 will keep y'all busy for the weekend. Oh, you can have that, and I got plenty of those. I give them to us at school. Over here. All right, so y'all, if there's no questions, I'll stop this. That gets y'all all the way through 8-4. Monday, we'll start with 8 uh, five, one and 8-5. And then uh, I'll send this video out as soon as I can.